Mountain Transportation Authority, and Los Angeles County Supervisor, the fourth district, the County of Los Angeles, as a former county supervisor. You do as proud. So welcome, uh, Mr. Supervisor, and please begin. Well, good morning, uh, Chairwoman Boxer, Chairman Mike. Uh, it's uh, my privilege to uh, welcome you to uh, Los Angeles County, the largest county in the United States of America. Uh, we're honored to have you here in uh, this historic bipartisan effort uh, of, a, of transportation infrastructure. So I'd just like to outline a few things on our perspective as it relates to the next surface transportation bill. But before I do that, just a sort of a brief idea of why there is congestion at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at 3 o'clock uh, of the organization uh, that I monitor serve as chairman. Uh, we are the third largest public transportation agency in the United States. We are responsible for all transportation planning, coordination, design, construction, operation, bus, subway, light rail, bus rapid transit, and the services for all of our 10 million residents here in Los Angeles County and the 4,000 square miles. We partner with Caltrans and Metrolink to support a very extensive HOV and commuter rail network. Uh, we are also undertaking major improvements to our region's highway system. We're an important part. Uh, we are a very important part of the nation's goods movement, as you know, and in my own district, I have the ports of LA and Long Beach, as well as Los Angeles International Airport. Our metro service is about 1,500 square miles of service, over 200 bus routes, 75 miles of rail lines, over 400 miles of carpool lanes crisscross this great county. We have over 9,000 dedicated employees and a budget that exceeds $3.5 billion. But as it relates to policy issues, I think, and it's been and some of our testimony, the mayor and I were sort of commenting and our testimony might be redundant because we've heard some very positive things from the members uh, that they were talking about. First of all, we need to recognize the importance of non-federal investments in transportation. That's state, local, and private. You know, every time we go to Washington, the feds tell us to come back with a revenue source. Well, the voters of this county, Los Angeles County, have responded three times in the last three decades to tax themselves for transportation improvements. And these three taxes taken together amount to about 1.5 billion annually. To date, the federal government has really largely turned a blind eye to the local leadership shown by this agency and local taxpayers, along with others like us across the nation. Uh, the current transportation, service transportation program neither recognizes nor rewards uh, this kind of priority <coughs> policy or incentivizes other metropolitan areas to do the same thing. We work very hard to, uh, to put this program together. Uh, we have been advancing and we would like to continue to suggest two very innovative financial concepts uh, that would really help leverage local transportation. And we call them smart federal dollars. And we say smart federal dollars because these funds coming in an era of financially stressed, the financially stressed highway trust fund has been mentioned already this morning makes the most of existing dollars. But we strongly believe that the smart, targeted, and innovative financing mechanisms can achieve two national priorities. Minimize the impacts on the federal budget and maximize the generation of new private sector jobs, particularly in the small business sector. And particularly here in Los Angeles County where we have an unemployment rate of close to 12.7%. A new federal approach to financing, uh, if it's incorporated in the next surface transportation bill, will leverage projects at the state and local levels that can achieve these priorities. Our two priorities would be one that we've been talking to all of you about. is one, the Qualified Transportation Improvement Bonds, and two, the Enhanced Transportation Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act Program, TIFIA, which we have outlined in greater detail and won't bore you with all the details in our written testimony. We believe this is a very sound approach, and the fundamentals of this proposal offer a very reasonable and prudent path for federal policymakers who, like all of us and all of you, are struggling to craft a strong and meaningful surface transportation bill in a very demanding fiscal environment. It is very difficult to uh, outsource a construction job or a transportation project here in America. And whether that project is a light or heavy rail project in Southern California or a highway improvement in Montana, the federal government's investment trans in transportation projects is an investment in America. So taken together, these proposals really, I think, hold the promise of reinvigorating our nascent infrastructure, creating anywhere from two to 400 and close to over 900,000 jobs nationwide without burdening the federal government with a very large bill. 
And as you prepare to craft this new surface transportation bill and reform what needs to be reformed, we truly believe that both the House and Senate be mindful not to discard programs with a proven track record. Programs such as the New Stars program have assisted many jurisdictions like Los Angeles County to address congestion and environmental problems while demanding a very significant non-federal investment. If you are looking for a model in the future, we believe this is it. We should not be talking of eliminating this program. We should be discussing creative ways to expand its approach and how that can serve as a model for other parts of the federal program, and we are a willing partner in that. We need to use the power of the federal government to help leverage federal and non-federal sources of money. And I need to make it clear, I'm not saying that we need a new federal program for loaning money or a new federal infrastructure bank. Uh, we here in Los Angeles County just do not need federal bureaucracy picking winners and losers, and that just doesn't work for anyone. We need flexibility, we need self-determination, and the power to access federally subsidized financing to make these projects possible. And lastly, I, I want to make sure I say this, uh, that our, our strongest to sustain support for leveraged local dollars does not in any way uh, that we want to diminish existing federal assistance. You have been a good partner. We continue to want to work with you. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this very historic uh, joint hearing, and thank you for your time and attention. Supervisor, thank you very, very much for that. And next we call on Mayor Viragosa. We're delighted to see you.